Well, as Alexis said, I'm uh, Stefan Salicki. I work with our clients primarily in the East region, uh, sort of stepping through their digital transformation journeys. And, you know, hearing the, the dialogue that started our, our session this morning, and then feeding that into kind of where Matt and Manuel took things. You know, I'm excited to to really tie together and, and make actionable a lot of those ideas that we've we've shared thus far in, in terms of some real world practical use cases around tracking and tracing in Dynamics 365, as well as leveraging some of the other pieces of the stack that uh, that we've done to to really enhance and round out and support the overall evergreen model that, uh, that Microsoft has transitioned to. So with that, let's jump in. One of the top use cases that, that folks are most intrigued by and see as being kind of the biggest business driver is this whole concept of predictive quality, right? So if we can look at the past, and use that as an enabler to really predict the areas where we will have the highest likelihood of issues going forward, I think that that ends up being a, a really impactful way to get ahead of those issues and ultimately intervene in a way that minimizes downtime, minimizes potentially bad product going out the door, but ultimately helps us maintain the, the utmost in our cost containment and get the best product out to our customers. And then the other, the other piece that I think is relevant to our discussion today is this whole concept of an end-to-end -end quality management system with centralized quality data, right? So, you know, a lot of the discussion has been around really centralizing on, on core uh, data strategy enabled through a, a modern ERP stack and then sort of rounded out with, with additional uh, technology to, to make the best use of what's there and being captured in the system. So, Think of ERP as, as the container for all the data that we are then leveraging and, and better enhancing the decisions that we're making coming out of that system. From our perspective, we're going to focus on Dynamics 365 here, as well as Power Apps, right? So Power Apps, you know, if you spend any time on LinkedIn or, or you follow any of, uh, any of the Microsoft sort of thought leaders, right, they're, they're talking a lot about low-code, no-code development, but these are ways to plug in both your ERP as well as other data sources and really get to very clean, very easy to use interfaces that maintain that evergreen status. So what you're seeing now is Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain, and it has the, the embedded Power BI dashboard driven by Azure Machine Learning that Manuel had just referenced in the prior session. So you'll see this is all live. I've got all of my open quality orders here, non-conformances, et cetera. But really, my focus, I want to drill into this report and, and see what it shows me, right? So, so let's sort of start our day as a production manager thinking about what I need to do to intervene to, to prevent, not just react, but to prevent any potential quality issues in this case. So the dashboard is serving up some, some red items here, and red any time in, a, in a, a dashboard scenario is the, the piece we want to focus on, right? That's the bad area, so, so to speak. So I've got a high degree of these D001s with our machine learning scoring those as, as potential issues that, that could be happening based on prior performance and then again applying our machine learning algorithms, right? So we've got the opportunity there to now go take proactive action as opposed to waiting for a potential catastrophe across a number here of different production orders. So let's pivot for a second and just take a couple of different perspectives here to validate what we're seeing. And then we'll go do that out on the shop floor with the Power Apps. So I've drilled in here to uh, that same report, but a level deeper showing me again across my classic product category, I've got a potential problem here, right? These are, these are driving a high degree of my, my potential NCR risk, my nonconformance uh, risk. So this is where I want to focus and spend my time. And then similarly, we'll take one final look here. And this, this pivots the data a little bit differently, right? So here we're looking at potential nonconformance by bomb line count, right? And as you might expect or even intuitively think, the more complex our bomb structures, the more likely that we're going to have a nonconformance event. 
But here, it's actually proving it out and showing you the data so that you can act on real information as opposed to strictly gut check, right? So we, we need to act here because we do see our trend increasing of nonconformances across this time horizon that we're looking at. So with that, let's go, let's go interact and actually uh, start to make some changes here. So what you're seeing now is a desktop rendition of our sort of phone form factor for Power App. Right, so this is plugged into that same Dynamics 365 system, and it's pulling in real time all of the data out that the uh, the system might be generating. So, as we're moving through our production process, I'm sure we're creating quality orders. We've got test results that we can go and and execute on across our our shop floor, and then as our team is interacting, we can either create ad hoc quality orders on the fly. We can create non-conformances if we need to, to manage those and start you know, more broad CAPA cases. And then we can also handle the disposition of our batches right here uh, within, our, within our quality app. So let's start with the quality order. And you know, the piece here that I love is that I can get into and initiate a quality order in really any number of different ways. So depending on what piece of data I have, that can sort of cue me up or, or start me off down the process. So given what we just looked at on the, um, on the dashboard side, let's, let's start with that D001, D0001, and we'll, uh, we'll start there. So let's grab that. Okay, so you can see it here. And then what the system's gonna do is it's gonna surface all the attribute data that I can then filter by to start initiating these quality orders, right? So I've got it in this particular site and in this particular warehouse, there we go, and in this particular location, right? And if I had additional attribute data related to this, that would also surface as well, right? But now I've got an opportunity, perhaps I'm standing next to that particular location. I'm gonna grab one or two and run them through some of our predefined testing scenarios. And let's just grab one and submit that. So now, if I was a production manager and I was just, I saw that, I, I wanted to get extra visibility to it, that could be the end. It then goes through the workflow for someone else to go grab. But let's, let's sort of pull the thread and, and follow this through and we'll, we'll actually track the test results here associated with this quality order that we just created. So this is now going to move to sort of that second tile, if you will. But now I've got, a, here's my quality order quantity, et cetera, where we started. And here are the testing uh, scripts or testing measures that I need to follow. And in this case, we're gonna follow that measurement. We'll accept it, this one's okay. We're gonna check our coil. That one's also okay. I'll save that. And that now gives me the opportunity to submit. If I needed to take a picture or attach something or sort of further the process, I could do so. But in this case, I'll just submit that. That will then pump right back directly to D365 in real time, and that'll update that same dashboard that we just took a look at.